in this uh, section we'll talk about the structure of liver liver is the largest exocrine gland and it weighs about 1.6 kg in a normal healthy adult human being we have seen the two parts which we made in the previous section when we were talking about the connections but there are four lobes two main lobes and these lobes are called right liver lobe or right lobe and the left lobe the right one is bigger and the left one is smaller and there are two smaller lobes these smaller lobes are called quadrate and caudate quadrate lobe and caudate lobe gallbladder is attached to quadrate lobe so here we can write that gall bladder is attached to this lobe and this gall bladder normally can store about 30 to 50 milliliters of bile so gall bladder stores 30 to 50 milliliters of bile in some animals like rats and horses, gallbladder is absent. Gallbladder is absent in rats and horses. So this is uh, about the liver from outside. Two main lobes are there, the right and the left, and two smaller lobes, the quadrate and the quad. We have also seen the position, it is slightly on the right hand side, just beneath the diaphragm. The secretion of uh, liver is known as bile. So here we can add, its secretion is called bile. And this bile is without any enzyme or we can say that bile does not contain any enzyme we will also see the composition of bile later on after we are done with the structure and everything so if we have to talk about the structure the liver is made up of hexagonal or polygonal lobules. So suppose we are drawing this kind of a lobular structure. It is surrounded by a fibrous layer. And this fibrous layer makes a capsule which is known as glissens capsule. This is a fibrous layer so that its shape is maintained. In the center of this is a canal which is known as the central vein. And around this vein are arranged hepatocytes. Hepatocytes are the actual liver cells. And these hepatocytes, they are arranged in the plate-like structure. So if we draw some plate-like structures, we would draw the hepatocytes also. On this, there would be hepatocytes. So if I make one plate slightly in detail, these are the hepatocytes. Hepatocytes are rich in glycogen so these cells which we have made here these are hepatocytes 
and these hepatocytes are the actual liver cells and they are rich in glycogen and that's when we store we say that glycogen is stored in liver and muscles this is the place where we have this glycogen store plus along with this we can also find some more cells which are fat storing cells so these are the fat cells which are also associated with these so let us draw one more place where we can draw these hepatocytes and the same is everywhere and that is why we say that they are arranged in plate like manner so all these lines which we have drawn they have these cords or strands of hepatocytes so if we see a chain of hepatocytes then this chain is known as hepatic cord cord word is given to a chain each cell is known as hepatocyte because they are arranged in a chain like manner or a plate like manner that chain is known as hepatic cord now to understand this i'm going to make this structure slightly bigger so that we are able to understand what is actually happening these are the hepatocytes and the in the enlarged part we would see that these hepatocytes have space in between them these or let me draw one more here so that we understand what is exactly happening this is the enlarged plate and the space between these cells these lines these areas they are known as canaliculi if i make one more here these structures these small spaces between the cells are known as hepatic canaliculi because these hepatic cells are going to pour bile so canaliculi collect this bile or this secretion and this secretion then comes into this upper part this upper part this part is known as herring's duct and this herring's duct is going to pour the secretion into another bigger duct which is actually the bile duct so if we just shift this whole thing here in between these cells would be canaliculi here would be the herring's duct and somewhere here we would see the bile duct that means all the cells they individually secrete bile that bile is brought by narrow tubes which are called canaliculi all canaliculi open into a slightly wider duct which is known as herring's duct and the all herring's duct they join to form the bile duct so ultimately the secretion comes into this duct that is bile duct and then all bile ducts would join and open into the duodenum the connection which we already have seen plus around this there is one more duct which is the hepatic portal vein and there are smaller arteries also so this is the hepatic artery so there are blood vessels which are actually associated with all these uh, lobules the space between these plates that means we are talking of this space this space is known as a sinus or sinusoids so this area is called a sinusoid it is filled with a connective tissue and there are some irregular cells which are scattered and these cells they are let me label it here these cells are known as kuffer cells these kuffer cells are phagocytic that means they engulf the foreign particles so this is the structure which we see 
liver regenerates and this is one organ of our body or one gland of our body which shows a great power of regeneration. Let us have a quick recap of this. There are two main lobes right and left and there are two smaller lobes quadrate and quadrate. In the liver there are hexagonal polygonal uh, lobules which are there and each lobule is surrounded by a fibrous membrane that is glissens capsule and that is why this hexagonal or polygonal shape is maintained. In the center of this glissens capsule or the lobule is a central vein. Around the central vein are arranged hepatocytes in plate like manner. Each cord or each row of the hepatic cells is known as hepatic cord. We have enlarged one plate here. These individual cells are hepatic cells. They are rich in glycogen and they pour or they secrete bile. Bile is conducted by narrower tubes which are called canaliculi. They join to form herring's duct and then finally into the bile duct. Associated with these are a few more ducts that is hepatic portal vein and even arteries are there so that there is blood supply to this area as well as ducts which are going to carry the secretion produced by the liver and as we said it can regenerate. So here we will write that liver shows power of regeneration. This is one structure in our body which shows a good power of regeneration and its secretion is known as bile. Now in the next segment we will talk about the functions of liver and that's where we will discuss the composition and volume of bile also.